Hey everyone, welcome back to What Valerie Makes. I'm Valerie, and today I'm going to be sharing all the things that I was able to sew up in the month of February. I was really trying to go off of what my plans were um, because I really wanted to make all those things, and I think I did pretty good if I do say so myself. I was able to completely finish my coat that I've been wanting to make for mm, a year and a half. So I made up the uh, Maker's Atelier, the classic coat. I actually was pleasantly surprised at how well I got on with it. Um, there were a few things at the end that were really head scratchy. But let me tell you a little bit more. So I made the size 16 um, and I don't know why I did this, but when I got last winter, I cut out the pattern, and, but I like, I have the paper pattern and I cut it out of the, I never do that guys. I never cut out of my paper patterns because I just, like I don't, I get nervous about it. <laughs> and for some reason I did it. I don't know if it's because I was like, oh, it's a coat. I don't want to trace like these giant pieces off. I think that's probably what happened. But anyways, I cut it out a year ago. So I was a little bit nervous about the size and hopefully like I didn't make a giant mistake and I'm happy to report I didn't. It fits uh, all as well. I actually think that there's um, a little bit, I don't really care because you, I wear it with like sweaters and stuff underneath, but like, I feel like it's a, a, a no, I wouldn't even say too roomy. I think it actually fits perfect. I would say that from this month, I also just came to the conclusion that I need to be making um, broad back adjustments in all my patterns. And I have been doing that for a couple um, of my recent makes. And it's just, I need to start doing it because it makes everything fit so much better. Um, but that is something that I wish I did do in this coat pattern because even though it is a little, like it's roomy, like I have plenty of room, I still have slight tightness when I go like this or when I like raise my hands up. Um, so I do wish that I did do that broad back adjustment in the coat pattern. But other than that small thing, I love it so much. I Okay, so um, about the patterns. <laughs> um, it is, it, it does say that it's for um, an advanced sewist. So I was nervous. That's why I was nervous, I think, from the beginning. And really, I think the only thing that makes this pattern advanced is the instructions. Like, honestly. And I feel like if this, if the instructions were better, this could easily be like a beginner coat pattern for somebody. Um, just because the whole, like, like the, I didn't even have problems until hemming. The hemming instructions were not good at all. Um, they weren't very clear. I read them out, like, so many times. I, like, like, because sometimes I have to say it out, like, read it out loud for it to click. And I kept reading it out loud, reading it out loud. And I'm just like, this doesn't make sense. And then I would try to, like watch another video on like how to do it. And it was mostly attaching the lining, well, hem hemming the coat with the lining and the vent in the back. So I was trying to watch another like video on how to do it. And because like other steps were different leading up to it, it didn't like, I couldn't get it. I couldn't figure it out. I figured it out. It's definitely not how they say 
to do it, but I'm very happy with like how it looks on the inside. I really think that everything looks really great. Um, but I, yeah, I am for sure didn't, like I didn't do it like how they said, because I couldn't figure it out. I honestly couldn't. But other than that, I feel like if they just worked on their instructions a little bit, that it would seriously be a beginner pattern. No problems. Like the collar went in great. Like uh, everything else, everything up. Great, great. Lining, great. Like all of that. And it was just the end. And then I'll tell you two things that are not the pattern's fault and that are my fault. I don't know why, but I put the welt pockets in the wrong place. Both, both of them the same, but in the wrong place. So basically, they're telling me to, there's like little notches and then you have to overlap the notches. Yes, that's how you do it. Like that's how you line up a pocket pattern piece. I know this, but when I read it, I read it as like lining up the lines so I thought it was like the lot, I don't know why I did that, but I did it on both of them. And then I was like, what did I just do? So instead of them being like at a normal pocket place, they're just a little bit further in and no one would really know, but like, it's just funny that I'm like, of course. And then the last thing that I did, again, I practiced like 15 times on my sewing machine to get the buttonholes right on a scrap piece. Like I'm like, I'm getting these buttonholes perfect. Like the, I'm, I'm figuring out which one's the best one for this fabric. What needle should I like everything? I'm like, I'm figuring it out. And so I, I did, I figured it out. I went in and all of them went in so nicely. They look great, got done, sewed in my buttons and like put it. And then I was like, here it goes. And I put it on and I started buttoning it. I'm like, why does this feel weird when I button it? I put the buttons in horizontally and not vertically. Like the buttonholes. I put them horizontally and not vertically. So they're set, they're this way. And I don't know why I did that. I think I was just so like in my head and like making sure my settings were right. And maybe because it just felt better with like my coat fabric to like put in the buttons that way. But I didn't even think, I got all the way to the end, put it on, started, and I didn't even realize it until I like put it on and started buttoning it. And I'm like, why does this feel weird? I'm like, oh, it's because the buttonholes are put in wrong. So that was totally me. But other than those two things, <laughs> um, I really love this coat and I'm really happy to have it. I, it's the perfect balance between like a heavy coat and like it's wool so it's warm but it's also a boiled wool and it's a little bit more lightweight so it's not so heavy and if there's one thing about me it's that I just like overheat easily even in the cold weather so I find that this coat is so perfect like I'm wearing a sweater and then I'm wearing this coat I have my scarf and my hat and what and I'm perfect, like perfect temperature. So I'm so happy with this coat and I'm so um, glad that I added it to my wardrobe. Um, the boiled wool I got from the Knitting and Stitching show in London two Octobers ago. The lining fabric is a really pretty like polka dot silk-like. Um, it is, I got it from the thrift store, like a giant amount of this fabric from the thrift store. So I don't really know what it is and I haven't done like a burn test or anything, but it worked perfect. And then the buttons are um, Pigeon Wishes buttons that I also got in the Knitting and Stitching show. Um, and then I added two, like they're faux buttons, but they're on like this uh, sleeve placket. And those are Pigeon Wishes buttons too that I just had um, left over from another project but I love this make, it's really great. And the next uh, the next item that I made is actually um, a gift that I made for my friends 
they are having a baby and I made the Studio Seren bear pattern. I loved making this pattern. Like I really loved making this project. It was something so like fun about, I think it's because I've never really sewn a stuffed animal before. And I know that sounds silly, but it was just like a really fun project to work on. And I actually thought that it was going to be quick. I'm like, this will be super fast. Like I'll have this done in no time. And it didn't take me too long, but it took me a lot longer than I actually thought it would. Um, more than a day, which I was like, oh, I'll just bust this out in one day. And, oh no, that's not what happened. But it came out so cute. Um, I basically just used all the fabric is fr fabric from my stash. Um, I am in love with like the little overalls that come with the pattern. And I just, I um, hand embroidered um, the baby's initials on the little bib. And yeah, it was really interesting um, doing like embroidery for like the eyes and the nose. That was the first time that I've done anything like that before with embroidery. So that was like a new thing to, to learn. And yeah, I just had a blast making this. Um, I wish that I knew more little children to like make stuffed animals for, but um, yeah, it was a really fun make and I'm so glad that I was able to gift it to my friends. I think the thing that shocked me the most is that they were like, okay, now, you know, like there's different, very clear instructions, highly recommend um, her pattern. She has some lovely um, different types of um, stuffed animals that you can like, that patterns to sew up. Seriously, it's all of them are so lovely. Um, but in the instructions, it's like, now really fill the head. Like, even if you think that you can't fit anymore, I bet you can. Like, keep basically, like, keep doing it. The amount of stuffing that went into that bear's head is kind of mind mind blowing. I'm just like, this has to be enough. But then you would like shape it up and then like look at it and it'd still be room. So you just keep sho shoving the stuffing in. But um, that was something that was like pretty shocking um, to me as I was working on it. But other than that, everything was so fun, like little ears to put on. I think the sewing is a little like hand sewing, like everything on is a little bit um tricky if you're not used to something like not if you're not used to hand sewing um which I'm not really but it didn't bother me too much but it was so fun so that was the second thing I managed to to make in February and then I was able to make the Sohow 7 free range slacks and um I got the fabric from Needle Sharp, and it is a beautiful uh, linen blend. I highly recommend it. It was a dream to work with. Um, and I also have like an affiliate code if you guys are looking to order from Needle Sharp. Um, but yeah, I'll put up my code um, so you guys can go and get 10% off of your first order. Um, if you want to just try it out and now they do the sewing subscription boxes which I get and but they also have fabrics and patterns and haberdashery items and like a bunch of other stuff as well so this will get you 10% um, off of your first order for whatever you decide to get so that's exciting for for everyone um, but let me talk about the free range slacks. I really enjoyed sewing these. I think the construction was super interesting. I hadn't put like in my mind, I'm like, oh, I've, I've made, um, elasticated waist wide leg pants before, but this was a little different. I really enjoyed like the side panels and the way that the pockets were constructed. Um, I really liked all of like the top stitching details that they have you do in the pattern. Um, 
And overall, I thought it was like a very well written and easy to follow, um, easy to follow pattern. Um, I really enjoyed sewing it. Um, I did make the size 14 at the waist and grade it out to a 16 at the hips. And I actually probably could have done a 12 at the waist and a 14 at the hip. Um, I feel like there is, I know they're wide leg and I think that I will eventually when I feel like doing it, right? It really doesn't bother me almost at all. But I do find that the back, I have like just a tiny bit too much fabric. It just, when you look at the back, the front looks great, but because there is those side panels, I feel like it would be a really easy fix to go in and just take some of, um, like just some of the fabric out of the um, side, like the side panels, it'd be like a quick and easy fix. So I think I'm going to do that whenever I get around to it. Again, it doesn't really bother me like that much, but if I'm being super picky, I think that is one thing that kind of is a little like, Oh, I wish there wasn't so much volume, like right at my behind, you know, like right at my butt. So it was definitely something that I needed in my wardrobe, just like another pair of like pants that like fit me comfortably. So happy to add those. And then on to my last make. It was two things, but it's wait on to my last make. It's the same pattern, but twice. All right, so I had mentioned that I wanted to make the uh, Seamwork Sable um, top out of the um, this like white, like burnout fabric that I had. And I showed it all and I was like, I'm gonna make this out of this. And I did do it. Um, I don't have it right now because it's in the process of transforming, if you will, into a different color. Um, it was just too white for my liking. It was too white. Um, it made me almost feel like, like I tried to like wear it with a few things, but it made me feel like I was like going to like a band concert. <laughs> I don't know. So I first I tried to dye it with tea and it worked, but then it's almost too close to my skin tone. So now I have just like a navy blue um, dye that I'm going to use to dye it blue and see how that goes. Um, of course, I'll share it when it's all transformed. I decided to make another one because I knew that I liked that. I wanted to make sure that I liked it before, like if I liked the, the cardigan before I like went through all the work of actually like dyeing this other one. So I made up another one and this um, is fabric from Lyrical Fabrics and it's a dead stock fabric. Um, I really enjoyed sewing this up. This is my very first Seamworks pattern and I enjoyed it. I thought it was a really um, interesting construction, um, mostly because a lot of these things, a lot of the things that I made this uh, past month were like kind of basic things, but a, with a little bit different design details, which I I'm always like interested in and like excite like it makes me more excited to sew it up. So for um, the sable top, I made a size 12 and um, it is a tight fitting like cardigan style shirt. Now I will probably be wearing it. Um, okay. Let me say this. I do think that I could have like if I were to make it again, I am probably going to make the size up. Um, not because I think it's too tight or it's not, but it, it looks like how it was drafted to look. Like if you look at it 
like on the model, like this is what it is drafted to look like. Um, but I would probably like a little bit more room. But with that being said, I think that it also could go like I am thinking about taking a bow off. Thinking about going down to two bows, two ties. Um, I think that I like the two ties better. Um, when I have all three of them done up, I just feel a little bit more like constricted. Not that I don't like it. Like I think it looks like good. But every time I untie the bottom one and I'm like, yeah, this is better. So I think what I'm going to do is go in and just unpick that seam and take out the third bow. Um, but again, that's on a list of like, maybe, you know, um, when I have like a busy week or I don't have many plans, those will be like my things that I'll, I'll do. Um, but let me tell you, I did shorten this one. Um, the, the top comes out a little bit long and I would like it to hit more at a cropped, not like super cropped. I want it to like go a bit over like any kind of pant or skirt or whatever that I'm wearing with it. Um, but it was like really long. So I took about an inch and a half off the bottom. There's like you use a twin needle to do like top stitching around the whole neckline and the bottom. And that was fun. Like I've done used my twin needle before, but this was like, just like, a fun detail again and it really pops in the um, top like you can really see and I think it adds a really good detail I would love to I think this would be really cute in a short sleeved so I um, have a couple like smaller cuts of um, knit fabric that I think I'll use to make one that is short sleeved I think that would look really good and um, be like great for the spring and the summer so that is on my list to do as well and then but that was everything that I have made in the whole month of February but I did also trace out the Blanca flight suit all like 20 something pieces but I did manage to trace that out and I just have to make a couple of, of adjustments on my pattern and then I want to um, cut out my fabric and get going. Um, I do think that it will probably be pushed for the month of March because it is so frugal. Um, if you have not watched my um, sewing inspiration for this challenge, um, go ahead and go give it a watch. Uh, I'm really excited to sew up some of those um, anthropology inspired looks. So those are definitely at the top of the list to, to get done in the month of March. But then if I have time, or um, I'm going to cut out the Blanca flight suit pattern. So I thought you'd be proud of me because I think I mentioned in my uh, plans video that like I really wanted to at least get it traced out. And I did. So I'm excited. Now I wanted to end this video um, with some of my favorites from the month. Now I got this idea from um, my friend Tamlin from Sewn on the Tine. She likes to do her like makes and favorites of the month. Um, she's been doing that for the past couple of months and I think that it's a great idea and also a really fun way to end um, a monthly makes video. So I pulled some of the things that I've been um, really loving recently. And actually one of the things that I have been just nonstop flipping through since I got it out of the library is this 100 Years of Fashion and Illustration book. And I got this because I wanted to look up some um, possible like designers to or like um, artists to maybe order prints from to put in my room. So I was like, oh, this is a great place to start because these are all illustrations of different um, 
of, of different designers. And I think that I definitely have gotten inspiration out of here and I've been like looking up different um, artists and I haven't ordered any prints yet, but this has been a really fun and um, inspiring book to flip through, Sp especially when I'm trying to like maybe redo my room a little bit and add some fun um, prints and yeah, different stuff. So this is definitely one of the things that I am loving this month. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about was a new podcast, a new to me podcast, um, which is the Sewing Club. And I have been having such a fun time catching up on all of the, there's not many um, episodes, but I had like binge listened to them um, since I found out about them. And yeah, it's such a fun concept of like, like a book club, but it's a sewing club. And I just love that. I love that they go and sew up the same pattern and then they have a discussion about it um, when they come back and they have a little talk with the designer. And um, overall, I just think it is a really fun listen. Um, a lot of good um, discussion about the pattern and fabrics to use and stuff like that, but also like lighthearted and fun. So I've been loving the Sewing Club podcast. And of course, last but not least, I haven't mentioned it in a video, but if you've been noticing um, at the beginning of my, at the beginning of my videos, my intro, if you will, um, my friend Andrew made the intro for me. Um, and also my little tune that I have with it. Uh, Jordan, my husband, um, made that and played the, I'm like, I want ukulele. <laughs> I was like, I would like a ukulele and like just something like fun, like maybe like, you know, like a, upbeat sounding, but on the ukulele. So he um, made the song and then my friend Andrew, who does um, animation for work, made that cute 2D animation and I posted about it on my Instagram, but I haven't mentioned it on my on um, my channel yet. So I'm very lucky to have some talented friends in my life to um, up my video game. So thank you, Andrew, for making that for me. And obviously, thank you, Jordan, for being so musically creative and tech savvy. But I think that is it for me today. Um, if you enjoyed this video and if you're back and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you doing? Subscribe. It's free. <laughs> As always, I appreciate you guys so much for being here and for watching until the very end. And until next time. Bye. little Trader Joe's sparkling white tea with pomegranate juice beverage. It's pretty good. Not my favorite, but it's still pretty good. <laughs>